Fellow citizens, today, once again, we celebrate the great event marking the decision of those before us to take charge of our destiny, to make our own laws, formulate our own policies, and to implement our own programs. Today, we celebrate 56 years of the freedom to manage our own affairs. It was a great decision, and as a nation, we started well on the path of greatness. Then we stumbled along the way, and the enthusiasm and joy of freedom and independence shrunk. But collectively, we have reclaimed the vision that inspired our independence. Since 1996, when we decided that enough was enough, that we must restore democracy and go to the serious business of building our nation, we have never looked back. And in 2007, you gave me the honor to lead in this forward march to build the new Sierra Leone. It was a mandate to build more schools, establish new universities, build more roads, more hospitals, and to generate more electricity. It was a mandate to improve access to pipe-borne water, to improve access to justice, and to help the less privileged among us to get out of poverty. It was a mandate to consolidate the peace, to strengthen our democracy, and to work together in building a better Sierra Leone. Fellow citizens, in my 10th and final independence address as president of this great nation, in my almost 10 years of service, as your head of state, I am proud of what we have achieved together. We have experienced a decade of uninterrupted stability in governance, rated the most peaceful country in West Africa and the sixth most peaceful in Africa. We have demonstrated to the world that we are a peaceful and stable nation and a nation that is ready to move towards prosperity. We have experienced difficult times, yet we have demonstrated resilience that is unrivaled and courage that is unsurpassed. Our policies have attracted an unmatched record of foreign direct investment into our country resulting in the employment of many of our young people, particularly in the extractive sector. And owing to those actions, we have witnessed a corresponding double-digit economic growth. We have established three universities in just nine years, and this year we will establish two more universities including one in the East. We have further taken affirmative action to provide free university education for persons with disabilities and for female students studying in the sciences in our universities. We have achieved gender parity in primary schools, considerably increased enrollment in junior and senior secondary schools, reintroduced the national school feeding program, and government is on track in providing subsidies and subventions for schools and colleges. We proudly recount the establishment of a national free healthcare program for pregnant women 
lactating mothers, children under five years, the delivery of cash transfers to vulnerable households, the provision of seeds and other inputs to our farmers, the establishment of the legal aid board, and we are on course to establishing a free national ambulance service. With all these achievements, our social protection is gathering pace, and we are ensuring that the quality of life of our people is on the rebound. Even when we were compelled to retrace our steps, we readily put together and implemented a recovery program that is becoming a blueprint for our countries. And our health sector is picking up again. More hospitals and community health centers are emerging in urban areas and in remote communities. And we are training and bringing in more specialists and equipments to better serve our people. Through our road infrastructure transformation program, we are connecting our farmers to markets, our towns to cities, and our country to neighboring states. With the construction of mini hydro dams and the installation of thermal plants and solar technology, many more people are accessing electricity in Freetown, in several major towns and in rural communities where there have been no electricity over three decades. For the first time in more than three decades, we are restoring pipe bone water to many parts of the country through the reconstruction of water stations in all district headquarter towns and in several other major towns, including Bo, Kenema, and Makeni. We also recount our deliberate efforts towards gender and youth empowerment. With the gender sensitive legislations we have enacted, the youth focus institutions we have established, and the unprecedented high level of participation of women and young people in governance, we have set our society on the path of a more inclusive, fairer, and brighter future. Fellow citizens, our experiences have taught us the need to get tracking systems in all growth sectors, to get accurate data and record our progress. We have therefore conducted a national census and we are implementing a national registration process to guide our development programs. The records show that our democratic credentials remain ever more commendable. We are reviewing our constitution strengthen our transparency and accountability mechanisms, open up the media space, and the voices of civil society actors are becoming louder. Every now and again, majority of Sierra Leoneans conduct their affairs in keeping with the tenets of democracy and good governance. We vote in a peaceful manner, practice our religions with tolerance and allow each other's political space. This is who we are, a peace-loving nation. Next year, on March 7th, that peaceful disposition will be put to the test once again. We will vote for our next set of leaders to carry on with this renewal. In doing so, 
we will have to protect the asset of stability we have collectively developed. We must continue to allow the rule of law to prevail, adhere to the regulations of our political parties, and respect the rights of others to participate in the political process. Fellow citizens, in just a little over a year, my tenure will come to an end and I will graciously hand over power to my successor in a democratic transition. Yes, I will be leaving office, but also a, leg a legacy of transformation and of peace and of unity, which we must all be committed to protect and build upon. We do not have another Sierra Leone and ours is a small country because we are a family of Demirs, Birankes, Kumanes, Ofengos, Kothos, and Hemos. The action of a compatriot in Kwenadugu or in Cambia may have consequences for others in Bonth, Kailaung, and in other parts of the country. We must therefore tread carefully and treat one another with civility, restraint, and compassion. We are a proud and resilient people. And over the years, I have watched how Sierra Leoneans have learned to overcome challenges of war, of disease and of division. This is why on this parting Independence Day, I am confident that our future is bright. As a nation, we will stride into a brighter tomorrow and burnish our credentials as a symbol of resilience an example of perseverance and a beacon of hope. Yes, Sierra Leone is rising again, but to sustain this renewal, we must work even harder and more collectively to consolidate the peace, foster national cohesion, and generate more of our own revenue. This is everybody's responsibility. It is not a matter of what political party you belong to or what region you are coming from or which language you speak. Whether you are at the ports or at the customs, a coast guard, or at the immigration office, or a mines officer, or an officer of the law, a vote controller, a member of parliament, or a member of the public, the building of the new Sierra Leone requires our collective determination. On this 56th independence anniversary, I therefore entreat everyone to pay heed to the thoughtful words of our national anthem and our creed of unity, freedom, and justice. I wish you all a memorable Independence Day celebration. May God bless you and may God bless the Republic of Sierra Leone. I thank you all.